right. <laughs> Unit uh, four, lesson seven. So now we're doing um, rational equations. So expression equation, what's the difference? It has an equal sign, yes. Equation has an equal sign, therefore making an equation. Expression has no equal signs, yes. For expressions have no equal signs. That's exactly correct. Yeah. The equal sign makes it an equation. This unit we have an equal sign. It's okay. It's all right. All right, let's calm down. Let's calm down. Okay, so there's two types. Listen, we're going to teach you the three, three ways to solve a rational equation. Okay, this one we're going to show you the intersection method on your calculator. Then we're going to do the x-intercept method on your calculator. And then we're going to do algebraically, which is the harder one. Okay, so first off, we're going to do intersection method, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and go to my calculator. You guys can fill this stuff in and draw the picture, but I'm going to go to my calculator here. So what we're going to do is in my y1, I'm putting the left side. So the 3 over x plus 1. So clear this. Okay, so I'm going to do parentheses, 3 divided by, I like to do parentheses around my x plus 1 stuff too. So like that. Three, that's 3 over x plus 1, and then plus, and then it's 1 over x minus 1. Okay, so that's my y1, and my y2 is simply just x2. I have what? Okay. Thanks. Oh, good catch, Kyle. Okay, so delete. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, this is Y2 is going to be the number two. Yeah. Okay, so stay with me. I know we're asking questions to try to participate. That's great. But at the same time, I'm, it's kind of more like a storm of questions, so it's hard to keep up. Okay, so understand what we're doing here is we have our rational expression on the left, and it's equal to 2. What's the line y equals 2 look like? Yeah, it's a straight flat line at 2. Okay, that's why we're doing intersection method. Where the 2 goes through our graph, that's what we're going to want to want. So let's see, what my, um, let's see what my graph looks like. Okay, so mine's not very good. I'm going to change my window here. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the three all right here on the side, just a second. Stay with me. I'm just gonna change my window to normal. I think normal should be good. Remember normal is negative ten ten. Okay. Alright, so here's my equation. Perfect. Okay. So that's probably re put it in. All right. Do we have questions? Or are we just socializing, or what are we doing? We have questions? What's what's the issue? <laughs> what's that? Okay. You have ways. It's not. See that x two is just x. It's just two. Okay, so, shh, yeah, Logan, why does that? Yeah, okay, so real quick, this is good. This is a, a question like in terms of for understanding or he's curious. Why is the graph doing these bends? Does anybody know why? No, nope, we're not doing shading. We're not doing inequality stuff yet. That's that's later. Okay, what do we know about, what have we been writing down every question so far when we're solving or when we're simplifying? The non-permissibles, which is what X can't be, right? 
So on this question we just did, what is a non-permissible? Well, look at this. It's bending away from the minus 1, and it's bending away from the plus 1. Sorry, my line's crooked there. But these are like graphs. It can't touch the 1, so it gets really close, but it doesn't hit it. That's what's happening. So that's what's making this graph do weird things. It's going, okay, oh, the negative 1 i got to take off this way. And then it's going, okay, I'm going to come up this way. Um, oh, I can't hit negative 1. I can't hit one this way, and then it goes, I'm out of here. I can't, because it can't be that number. That's non permissible. When it's that number, you divide by zero, that's impossible. Okay, so that's where these bends come from. The bends come from our non permissibles. That's a great question, Logan. Okay, so let's go back to what we're doing, though. We're using an intersection method to solve. Well, what do you do in terms of solving? Where they cross is their what? Yeah, their intersection or the answer. Okay, so how many intersections do we have? How many? Two. One, two, right there. One and two. We have two spots. Okay, we'll have to look at it later. We have this right here is our y equals 2, and then this is our other graph, the three pieces. Because they're non-permissibles. It can't touch them, so it has to break up. It has two spots that it can't touch. It probably wouldn't for you right now. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, so then, yeah, no, that's fine, that's fine, don't worry about it, you can still do what I'm doing, it's just, yeah, it's the older, one year older calculator, that's all, yeah, that's fine, yep, all right, okay, so, what's wrong with yours, Quinn, yeah, that's okay, sometimes what it does is, like, it, it kind of just acts like it's, doesn't want to come down here, so it kind of pops up, but if you do the intersection stuff, it's going to work. Let's just make sure we have the same answer to intersect, and then we'll go from there, okay? I think the other thing you guys can do is we might be able to do a zoom feature, but let's just kind of, let's try the intersection first. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, so if I go second calc, and I'm doing number five now. Number five is intersect. Now, intersect's different. It's not left bound, right bound. You just got to make sure you're on one line or the other. Now, see right here? I'm going to move it. What line is it on? Just keep moving it. See where yours is at. Mine is on the curved middle. Because watch it. Just keep it keep. Where are we trying to get it to? <clears throat> right. All you want to do is establish where is your cursor. That's all we're doing right now. Where is your cursor at? My, I want to get my cursor. We have these two intersection points. I want to get my cursor on this line or this line, okay, to start. So now, now watch. Now, this is what's important. Watch. I'm right now, I'm on the curved line, correct, not the straight y equals 2 line. Are we all okay with that? Now, watch. If I move this far enough, it's going to come back down the other curve. Watch. See? Now he's on this curve. So I'm going to move it back to the other one because I'm trying to get my first intersection point, which I'm going for this one right now. So I'm going to move it back to the other piece. Come on. Okay, there he is. He's on. He's right here. That's where my cursor's at. It's on this curve right here. So I'm just going to hit enter. I'm just on the line. It doesn't matter where you're at as long as you're on the line. Let's hit enter. Now it says second curve. Now second curve, we want it to be on the what? The y equals 2 line. So that's where we're going for the intersect. So I move this. Is it on there? Yeah. See, it's moving on that straight line, just going right down the line. I hit enter. Now it says guess. I go close. Right there is close enough. And I hit enter. And it zeroes in on my first intersection point. So my intersection is, um, that's zero. E is a negative 14. This is just zero. 
and then y equals 2. So your first answer is 2. Or 0, 0 is your first answer, so we're doing it for the x-coordinate. Okay. Okay, we'll have to look at it in a second then. What'd you get for your y? Okay, then you're fine. Two is the answer. Or is the point? The answer is zero two. You got zero point one. So I mean, you're just I, I, it's be zero. It's just kind of rough. All the answers should be two. Yeah, sorry for the y. Yes, good point. Zero is what we want. You're right. Okay. Yeah, that means zero. Yeah. So your answer is zero. So you have what we have. That's what I have. I have either. Yeah. Yeah. Just write zero. Don't write this. Be smart enough to know that's zero. Okay, I'm going to do the second part, guys. <laughs> We're going to have to move on. All you guys' calculator issues we'll have to mess with later. Okay, so the next one, I'm moving to this curve right here. I'm on it. Enter. Now i got to make sure I'm on my straight line again. I am. Enter. And come back somewhere close. Enter. 2 is my second answer. So 0, 2, and 2, 2 are my points of intersection. Okay, 0, 2, and 2, 2 are my points of intersection. Okay, if you have calculator problems, we'll figure out in a little bit, but hopefully you're just following me. I mean, it's, you're going to have to do what I'm doing. Okay, so using the intersection feature, that's the main point here. So we'll minimize this for a second. All right, so let's talk about what we did again one more time. So our picture looked like this. You didn't have these lines. I'm just drawing them to help me make my graph better. So it went like this, that, that. That's what your graph should roughly look like. I know there's some weird hiccups in there, but that's the idea. And then for 4 down here, this is where we got x was 0 and 2, or if you write them as points, we got 0, 2, and 2, 2. And like Kyle said, we're going to get 2 every time for the y because that's what the line it's going through. It's at 2. Okay, so besides calculators, is there any general questions in terms of doing the intersect method? Yep. Okay. Um, like it's just positioning. So when you get your intersect, you go y to the base intersect. But uh, how do you know where to put the plot point? So where the plot point? You do, it doesn't matter as long as you're on the line. You can plot the point anywhere you want for enter. That intersect feature is a lot different than the last one. If I'm anywhere on this line down here, I can hit enter. And as long as I'm anywhere on this line, I can hit enter. And they get somewhere close to this area and hit enter, and it zeroes in. Okay. So that's all you have to do. Okay, anything else? Okay, so the x intercept method. Okay, let me ask you this, and you should know this. How do we get x intercepts when we're factoring? What do we have to have one side equal to? Zero. And that's what you do here. So the only thing we do different, okay, the only thing we do different is we minus the 2 over. So the one side zero. So like this, we have the 2 over. And then we put this whole thing into our y1, okay, with the minus 2. I don't know why the minus 2 is not on there. Well, okay, we're good. That's good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put the whole thing. I'll go to my calculator here. Okay, so... I'm going to change this here. I'm just going to go up and change my old one. I'm going to put a minus 2 on the end. Minus 2. 
minus 2. I'm going to delete my other two. And we should get something like this. Okay, so as you can see, the whole thing did what? It moved down. If you look at your, maybe your last picture, it was a little bit higher. This one moved down a little bit because we minus the two. It's the same same deal we have with parabolas. And then we still have the same non-permissible lines. We're going to call these asymptotes later, but not now. And that's negative one, and one is where it's bending around. Okay, so now this time, we're not doing intersect. We're doing the what? We're doing the zeros because we're doing x-intercepts. So set number two, we're doing the zeros. Now you do the left bound, right bound deal. Okay, so my cursor luckily just went right to the center, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it left because that's a zero. Do you guys understand? We're looking for this spot and this spot are zeros. Yes, so we're doing second trace zero right now. Okay. And so I hit my left key to make sure I'm the left of this zero. So left, left, okay, I'm left of it. I went out of the screen. Let's come back down here. Okay, so it's right there. I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to hit the right key, and I'm going to tell I go past the zero. Okay, I'm past it. Oh, not yet. Now I'm past it. Enter. Now I go close to it. We're expecting this answer because we've already done it. We got zero. This is zero again. E to the negative 15, zero, zero. Okay, so that spot is zero again, just like we got before. Okay, what are we expecting for the second one? Two, right? So let's go see if we make sure we get two. So now I'm going to move this, and I'm going to move it to the right until I come, there we are, came back down. Left key past the zero. Right there. Right key past the zero. Where'd it go? And close. I might have went too far. Nope, I didn't. So my zero is two, zero. So they're the same answer, so you can do either one. That's the point. Okay. All right. Maybe after we get done with the lesson, we can do a couple more, just practice with our calculator. Sounds like we're just having problems with the calculator. Okay, so this picture looked like similar. Looks like that. Like that. It looks like that. Okay, and again, we got x equals 0 and 2 are the answers. Remember, we're solving for x. Okay. All right. Now for, I guess I shouldn't say this, but I was going to say the harder part. But <laughs> All right. Solving simple rational equations algebraically. Okay. So the following strategies can be considered when solving rational equations algebraically. Um, these are, I'm not going to highlight kind of important things to remember. And these are, again, things you should know how to do from previous math courses. Okay. When you have a rational expression on each side, it's very simple to do cross multiplication. Okay, that's what we want to go with. So think about cross multiplication when you're going for, um, you have rational expression on both sides, like this one here. I'll show you why that helps in a second. If a rational equation has more than one term on either side, consider multiplying each term in the equation by the lowest common multiple of the denominator. So what that means is if you have different stuff on the bottom, it's like we're kind of getting common denominators for everything. Okay, so this is kind of like if you want to call this one common denominator is what this one's kind of talking about. Get them all the same. Use previously learned skills to solve linear and quadratic equations, so just regular solving. And then remember your non-permissibles. Okay, so let's just do a couple. See how you do. Take questions and get, go from there. So, for example, one. Like, when you look at this, what's the ugly part? What do you not like? What's that? Yeah, the fractions, right? And then remember a couple, of, um, I want to say maybe it was unit three or unit two. What do we do to get rid of the stuff off the bottom? Say that, Sarah? Right. Multiply everything by x. If I multiply this by x, 
multiply this by x, multiply this by x, multiply this x. I multiply the whole equation by x. By doing that, it's I can do whatever I want as I do it to everything. It gets these to cancel, which is what we want, and now I just have 4x plus 2 equals 7x plus 3, and I have a simple algebra problem now. Is everybody okay with that? So I'm going to minus the 4x. I'm going to minus the 3. I get negative 1 equals 3x. Divide 3. Negative 1 third equals x. From the beginning, what is my non-permissible value? What can x not be from the very beginning? Zero, right? If x is zero, it's not working. Good. So zero is my non-permissible. Okay, and we'll verify them together. Let's solve them first, and then we'll verify them together. So I'll save this for verify for this guy. Okay, so this one's the one I saw about. You have two rational expressions equal to each other. They're both fractions. We don't like either of them, so what we're going to do is we're going to cross-multiply. So what we're going to do is, by cross-multiplying, we're going to multiply the x plus 2 over here, and we're going to multiply the x plus 1 over here. Cross-multiplication cancels because what we're doing is, is this is divided by x plus 2, right? So opposite division is what? Multiply. This is divided by x plus 1, so opposite of that is multiply. So we get those to go away. And now we have, sorry, 5 times x plus 2 equals 2 times x plus 1. And now we have, again, a rather simple algebra problem. Okay, so all we did is simply threw the bottoms to the other side. That's called cross multiplication. Yes, Spencer? Okay. Yeah, one step. Okay, so again, what I did was I took this, I threw it over here, I took this, I threw it over there. See the cross? That's cross multiplication. Okay, so I'm going to distribute 5x plus 10 equals 2x plus 2. Move the smallest x. I'm going to minus the 2x. Since I minus 2x, I want to move the 10. That's gone. That's gone. Whoops. 3x equals negative 8. x is negative 8 thirds. And from the beginning, what's my non permissible? Good. X can't be the negative 1 because I'd make this 0, and negative 2 because I'd make this 0. Very good. All right, so let's verify quickly. So how do we verify? Let's just ask ourselves that. How do we verify? We have an answer. How do we verify it? Lauren? Yeah, print the equation. Make sure the left side equals the right side. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go 4 plus 2 over. Yeah, it's ugly. It's a negative 1 third, but we'll put it there. It's fine. Okay, equals 7 plus 3 over negative 1 third. Dividing by 1 third is the same as what? Multiplying by 3, very good. Okay, dividing by 1 third is the same as multiplying by 3. In this case, it's a negative. So this is now going to be 4 plus a negative 6, because it's like timesing by 3, the 2. This right here is going to be 7, that's going to be 9. 4 minus 6, negative 2. 7 minus 9, negative 2. We verified. Okay. And this one here. This one's going to be a little bit uglier because it's negative 8 thirds. So let's do it. 5 over negative 8 thirds plus 1 equals 2 over negative 8 thirds plus 2. First thing we're going to do is common denominator. So I'm going to make my 1 a 3 over 3. I'm going to make my 2 a 6 over 3. Just changing it into thirds. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 3 divided by 3 is the 1. Okay, so I have now, this makes a 5 
over a negative 5 thirds because negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. And then here I have 2 over a negative 2 thirds. Okay. You can put that in your calculator if you want or if you understand it. 5 divided by negative 5 thirds the same thing as 5 times negative 3 fifths which is going to give you a negative 3. So you're going to get a negative 3 equals a negative 3, and it'll be verified. All right, we've got one more page. Hang in there, and then we'll work on some calculator issues. Okay. All right, states are not permissible values and solve algebraically. So we're working algebraically now. So let's say our non permissibles first. Okay, so what are my non permissibles here? What do you think, Kyle? What's one of them? Yeah. For this guy? Nope. Zero's okay. Uh, negative three over two. So negative three over two, and you got another one, Quinn. What's the other one? Okay, good. And um, Emma, what is this? What strategy you want to use for this one? Yeah, Larry, what would you do to solve this? How would you start it? Cross multiplication. So good. The three x plus five will go up here. The two x plus three will go over here. Okay. So three x plus five times four x minus two equals. 6x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. Yep. You will now, yep. Okay, so now we do have to FOIL. 12x squared, negative 6x, 20x, negative 10. Oh, 12x squared. 18x, negative 2x, and negative 3. So now we're just going to combine like terms in the middle. So we'll have 12x squared, negative 6 plus 20 is 14x. 18 minus 2 is 16x. And now I want to move everything to one side. Okay, so it's kind of cool because the 12x squareds go away, so that's going to make an easier algebra problem. Okay, so actually now I'm going to want to add 10 over minus 16x over. It doesn't matter which way you go. I just picked that way just because, I don't know, it's kind of the way I just chose. 14 minus 16 is negative 2x. Ne uh, negative 3 plus 7 is 7. Negative 3 plus 10 is 7, sorry. And then we're done. Negative 7 halves. Again, you can verify that as well. Yeah. How does cross multiplication work? So, how does cross multiplication work? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, how would I get rid of what's the opposite? Remember, we can do whatever we want to an equation. Let me do it to what? The other, side. other side, right? Okay, so then how do I get rid of divide by 3x plus 5? Okay, so I'm going to multiply here. I'm going to multiply here. So we're just not writing that one because that cancels it, and then we have this relationship. That's what happens. No, that's good. I'm sure you're not the only one that thought that. Okay, that's how cross multiplication works. Okay, so on part B, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Is everybody good? Because in part B, I want the room here. Okay, so part B, how do you want to attack that one? What do you think, Sam? Um, we don't really want to make one side zero. We want to get everything. What we want to do is we want to get everything on the same playing field. So we want to get rid of the fractions, right? So how do I get rid of t plus 1? 
Yeah, so I want to multiply everything by t plus 1. Like everything. And then how do I get the t minus 3? Multiply by t minus 3. Do you kind of see the pattern here? Like that. So now what happens is, see, I don't have to multiply the t plus 1 here. Because what? It cancels. Yeah, it cancels, right? So this is going to go away. I don't have to multiply the t minus 3 here because that's going to go away. So now we have this. We have t minus 3 times 5t minus 2 minus t plus 1 times 2t minus 1. I, I hate t's in math. Oh, and t minus 3. So that's the whole thing right now with no fractions now. Fractions are gone. Questions on that? Making your head hurt? <laughs> Fair enough. I would say this isn't hard, it's long. Okay, let's do our non-permissibles real quick. What's my non-permissibles? T can't be negative 1 and Three, good. Okay, so let's go ahead and foil these out. So that's going to be 5t squared minus 2t. I'm just doing here, here. Negative 15t and positive 6. We're minusing this whole group, so we're going to change all their signs. So this one here is 2t squared negative t plus 2t minus 1. Okay, let's simplify the left side first, and I'll multiply out the right side. So it's going to be 5t squared minus 2t squared. So that's going to be 3t squared. So I'm done with them. Okay, then it's going to be negative 2t minus 15t. So that's negative 17t minus negative 1 and 2 is 1. So minus a 1 is negative 18t. So I got rid of all these. And then 6 minus a negative 1. Minus a minus is a positive, so I get 7. So my left side is that right there. Oh, okay, so let's do the right side now. The right side. It's gonna, we'll, we'll multiply the 3 at the end. t times t is t squared. Negative 3t. t. Negative 3. Okay, so that's what that fa um, foils out to be. We're times a 3 to all of it now. So 3 hits all three things. 3t squared minus 6t minus 9. So that's my left side, or my right side, excuse me. Yeah. Not always, but it's very helpful when it does. So, like, I'd say expect it, but don't – it doesn't always happen. Because sometimes you might have to factor to figure it out. You might have a T-square. You might have to factor, use quadratic formula. We have all of our tools that we can use to solve. So we don't – what I'm telling you, Spencer, is you don't need these to cancel the solve. Okay? Oh, anything else? Okay, so it's finished. Like he's saying, yeah, he knows the pattern. So I have negative 3T-squared. These cancel. So now let's put my T's together. I'll add 18T over. And then I'll add the 9 on the other side. So I get 16 equals 12t. So t is 4 thirds. t is 4 thirds. Oh, we got one more. One more. It's one of the days you want to blow your brains out. <laughs> I apologize. All right, so how do we want to start this one? You don't. Okay, so we'll just close it up here, hit stop, and well, the first thing I do is I'd factor this. I know this is x plus four, x minus four, and then we see we have that here. Okay, so 
close. They won't just cancel so easily, but that that'd just be too simple, right? Okay, so I want, like we did last time, right? We want to get rid of this x minus 4, so we times everything by x minus 4, right? So I'm going to go x minus 4 to everything. Okay, and then I want to do this one by x plus 4 to everything. And then here. And so now, I think, I think the neat part is that cancels, that cancels, that cancels, and that cancels. So we have no fractions now. So what we have left, if you can see it there, I know it's really small, we have an x plus 4 times 1, which is just x plus 4. We have a plus x minus 4 times 1, or 2, excuse me, this is a 2 here. So we have a x minus 4 times 2, and on the other side is just equal to 5. So really, that's, I mean, that kind of made it look nice. Like, a, really, we don't have much, well, it's not very hard from here. Here's just algebra, we're not going to have any x squareds. I have, this is a 2x minus 8, right? So I have x plus 4 plus 2x minus 8 equals 5. I'm just solving now. So that's 3x, negative 4, add the 4. We get our, finally, we get our first whole answer. x is 3. Okay, let's go back real quick. What's our non-permissibles to finish up? What's our non-permissibles? Positive negative 4. Good. Positive negative 4. All right, let me stop the recording here.